everybody and welcome. So glad to be with you today. I'm Judith Silverman Hodara from Fortuna and delighted to be with you and with Jane Mulcahy, who is a coach with us at Fortuna Admissions. And I have a couple of questions for her. So I uh, wanted to just dive on in and ask you, Jane, what is your top piece of advice for admissions candidates? Absolutely. I think my top piece of advice for admissions candidates is really to own their story mm -hmm. and not try to check every box because they think they need to check every box. So even if you've worked at the same place that other candidates may have worked, the experience that you've had prior to that working experience is still going to be unique, right? And so it's going to influence how you've interpreted things through over your years and really just own the experience and the voice that you have. It is really obvious when candidates try to take an experience that maybe didn't mean a whole lot to them mm -hmm. or wasn't that significant and they try to blow it a little bit out of proportion just to check a box that they think they need to be right. checking on an application. And so really just own your own unique voice. That's why we're here, honestly, to help you find that unique voice if you don't know what it is or you're struggling with it. And just try not to try not to be worried about checking every box on the application. We were just talking about that a little earlier today and that your story is really one that, that follows you throughout your application process. So if you talk about it in your essays, you might be talking about it in an interview and it might be something that's going to resonate throughout your presentation. So what you said Absolutely. about owning that story is really so pivotal. It's just going to come so much more naturally and yeah. your enthusiasm for that story and for that experience is going to come through when it's authentic versus something that you might be trying to manipulate or create that isn't necessarily significant to you. And I frequently say to students, I can tell when it's something came easily, right? When you're reading something that felt like it just flowed as opposed to something where, you know, you were really trying to wiggle it in there. Um, and there's a definitely exactly. a difference in that approach. Exactly. You can, you can hear it in the application, whether that's in the writing or the interviews, you can really tell. And, and we want to get to know as an admission committee member or as an, a prior admission committee member, we want to get to know who you are. We're trying to craft a class that's going to complement each other well. So don't worry if you don't have something because know that we're probably going to admit somebody else that does have that. And the two of you are going to be able to work together and really complement each other in the graduate school experience. That's a great way of looking at it for sure. Um, so Jane, you've had such extensive coaching experience, um, throughout your, your tenure in admissions. What do you think is a coaching superpower that you have? Yeah, I think in, in my experience, my coaching superpower is, is my ability to really actively listen mm -hmm. and respond with thoughtful questions that help candidates find that voice. So in my time, in my career, I've, I've spent, I think every job I've ever had has required or been uh, evaluative interviewing has been a part of that role. And so I have so much experience interviewing other people and really, really hearing what they're saying, but then also being able to narrow in on what they're not saying and being able to dig into some of those pieces efficiently and effectively. And I think when it comes to coaching, that is just an incredibly helpful skill in helping the individuals that I'm working with really find their voice and find things that they might not have even known was a part of their experience um, or was significant to them. But in asking the right questions and really listening to what they're saying, we can draw that out. So it's really looking below what might be stated, like the next level down and the next level down. Absolutely. What are those follow-up questions that maybe no one has asked you before mm -hmm. that, that I'm going to ask you because I want to understand really where is, where is that answer coming from and what's motivating that response? What do you think is one of your favorite student or client success stories? Um, I know you've had, you've had a, you know, a, a variety of roles within admissions, but is there one thing in particular that stands out to you? You know, I will be honest, I think the the candidates and the success stories that are closest to my heart are the, the reapplicants or the waitlist mm -hmm. applicants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when um, I was helping a colleague apply to grad school the first year, they didn't get into the schools that they were looking to get into. And so we worked together and really thought about, well, what can we tweak in your application this next year? 
Um, who did you ask for letters of recommendation? Does that make sense? What were the stories that you shared? Let's look at those essays again. And the next year, you know, they were able to get into an MBA program that they were really excited about and excel. And it's just, it's so exciting to see that. I think too, um, having during my time in admissions, getting to make those waitlist calls, probably yeah. the best part <laughs> of, of my time because yeah. These were individuals that that somehow you saw as an admission committee member, you saw something special in them and maybe you weren't able to admit them right away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you did make that call, I mean, I remember I called one waitlisted candidate. He was in the car with his fiance who had already been admitted to the school, that, wow. the, the program that we were that I was working for at the time. Wow. He was also in the car with his grandparents who had always <laughs> wanted him to do a graduate degree. <laughs> what a and story. so just to be able to deliver that, that information in that moment and be a part of that moment with, with everyone else in the car. <laughs> and, and that candidate came and they blew it out of the water. They, you know, they were so successful in their coursework. They mm -hmm. were so successful mm -hmm. ex outside of their courses and their extracurriculars. They had a great job after they left, they were actually doing a JD MBA program. Wow. Um, and so by admitting them to my program, we were getting them into a dual degree program that they were really excited about. And it was just, I think that's one of my favorite calls that I've ever made, but just working with those candidates who are either on the wait list or reapplicants yes. is actually really fulfilling for me. Because they also, I think, come with a better understanding of themselves, certainly a better understanding of the process, but it is, it is, you're almost like really diving that much deeper the second time around, right? And really, you know, plumbing the depths, so to speak. Right. And they change a little too. Yeah. They say, you mm -hmm. know, I didn't even mm -hmm. think about this school before, but right. maybe I should think about this school this time around, because now that we've gone through this process, I think it actually might be a really good fit. So that's exciting too, just to see that process of change and growth over the course of time with those reapplicants. I love that story. And it's funny because, you know, now schools are starting all over the country and all over the world. And it's always exciting to think about them. You know, all of the students that we've worked with just starting out in their first classes and getting acclimated. And, you know, as you said, so many reapplicants are, are now settling into their first year classes, which is, which is amazing um, to know that we've been a part of that. Um, so Jane, I, I love talking with you. And I was curious I know this is a tough one. Why are you so passionate about coaching? You know, I, I think about that and, you know, what is it that I enjoy? Why do I volunteer my time to, to help other people try to better themselves? And for whatever reason, I get energy from that. I really mm -hmm. get energy from helping other people succeed. And, and I'm sure, you know, I, there's a part of it, right, where, well, part of their success, maybe I played a little bit of a role in that. And that is just so fulfilling to me to help other people set and achieve a goal. And I think that's what really makes me passionate about coaching because I'm helping them do that. And it, that that's exciting because the, the process is different for everyone. No, right. no two individuals are ever going to have the same experience. And so it's always new. It's always different. I'm always learning something and going through that process with someone. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about it. I'm definitely a learner. I like to continue to learn and coaching really gives me that opportunity to continue to learn through other people, but then also share that joy. I mean, what, what's better than sharing the joy with someone who's just achieved something that they've really been working hard for. It's just so fulfilling. I couldn't echo what you said more a hundred percent. This is just something that we do because we, as you said, that joy is such a part of, of what gets us involved in coaching and mentoring. Um, and it's just such a delight to chat with you and hear about your background. Um, if you'd like to meet Jane and learn a little bit more about Fortuna, you can do that by checking out our website. Um, again, really happy to have Jane with us today and looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, Judith.